Hi everybody, welcome back to Spurverse. As you can see, I've got the HMS Victory back on the bench, but I wanted to give a quick shout out to Jamie Bate, who was part of the team of Jeff Fink and Steve Williams. So it's the three of them that were actually responsible for creating this incredible TARDIS uh, console that I'm working on. And I wanted to say thank you, and I failed to mention his name, and uh, it doesn't come up in this episode. So this is just a quick sort of upfront say, Jamie, I apologize. And so going forward after this video, um, when I sort of recap, and I like to always recap and remind the audience uh, what I'm working on and who was responsible for the kit, I, I promise you faithfully, uh, your name won't get dropped again. And hopefully one day we can shake hands and have a beer. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the episode. Thanks, guys. Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe, and this is part two of my Build the Eighth Doctor's TARDIS console and surround. And uh, I've made quite a bit of progress, but uh, it's, it's, um, well, it, it's one of those things where you, you, you sort of are not sure about certain elements that you've never really worked with together. For me, MDF, which is my laser cut wooden pieces, and my uh, PLA parts, um, I wasn't entirely sure how that was all going to sort of come together. Um, so with a little bit of experimentation and some playing, I've discovered uh, a few things uh, about what it likes and doesn't like in terms of how I put things together. Um, but I have I have found that this um, this gap fi filling um, my teeth aren't working this gap filling thick from a company called Starbond um, is doing very very well and um, I'm just sort of using a little bit of zip kicker on that and uh, it's biting quite nicely it, it the the sort of the MDF what's really interesting is. It's this sort of very fibrous board, as we know, and when you stick the uh, the super glue on it, it closes up those fibers uh, very quickly. So it's a lot more efficient than any kind of wood glue. Plus, the um, the, the PLA uh, plastic um, is biting to that quite nicely. Um, I'm getting a little bit of time to move things around, and that's a good thing. But um, um, but there we go. So what I have accomplished so far, um, and it is quite a lot, it, it never looks like a lot, but it's quite a lot, is I've glued together uh, my base, and here it is, and I've stained it with a mahogany stain because as I mentioned, um, that was what I called for on the set. And uh, that's exactly uh, what I've tried to accomplish here. But you know, like everything else, um, it's one of those crazy things with lighting and, 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 um, and time. Things don't look right on, on the video screen. So people are going, oh, you know, was it gray? Was it silver? Was it this? So I, I can actually tell you exactly what the colors are and should be. And so that's what I'm going for here. I had another comment too, because I post on Instagram, at Spruverse, a lot more of my sort of detailed moments, and I did have a comment about, hmm, when I was building my base, this guy said, um, and I forget his name, so I apologize, uh, but uh, he said, I didn't know uh, that's an interesting color for the, for the, ex, for the outside. Now, one of the things uh, that, that's curious about that is, is that on the actual set itself, over time, we did make some changes during production uh, to accommodate various different things. Now, I don't recall whether or not we actually uh, did make the outer ring a darker color or not, but for the purposes of the model, I think it's acceptable and it looks pretty good. Now, I know it's not canon. But I'm not a big It's Canon guy. So don't follow me if you want to be Canon. If you want to be Canon, then my recollection is we never did put any kind of a darker um, color on the outside ring. 
but I've done it because I think it looks pretty cool and that's what it's called for in the in the instructions so I'm sort of following along and why not right make your TARDIS console room uh, the way you want it and um, let's all remember and celebrate you know the way we want to, to celebrate it um, but anyway um, lots of stuff going on. I've been uh, using my metalizer. Now I talked to you about this. This is my um, metal effects oxidizing iron paint, which you can get. Um, it's actually owned by Rust-Oleum now, and I've got a massive jug of it. And um, I've been giving this several coats of it, and um, it's really adding a wonderful texture to this. I use the same. Uh, thing on my ET uh, uh, spaceship as well and I really like the patina and, and, and sort of the otherworldliness it gave to that and prior to that yes we've all been using it on our 32 inch resin Nautiluses uh, from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea um, uh, but there is a guy called RC Man and he is uh, the guy who supplies the Nautiluses and it was his suggestion that we do this. Now, curiously enough, one of the things that he recommended was that you paint the entire thing black, then you paint the entire thing silver, then you give it two coats of the metalizer and then you spray it with a, um, with a vinegar solution and you get a sort of an instant rusting. I've not done this here. Um, in this particular case, I'm using their Metal Effects Primer uh, simply because um, it works really well on wood and metal surfaces. And because we've got a lot of MDF board that we're using, I thought I'd sort of follow along. Now, um, and then of course you spray it with what they're calling the Rust Activator. Um, now, curiously enough, this uh, rust activator um, is is a sort of it's a it's got copper salts in it, um, and I think that sets off this sort of rusting effect. Now, it has worked, uh, interestingly enough, but ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm going to be patinering this myself with some greens and coppers because uh, that's what we did on the original set. Um, it was actually um, most of, uh, if not all, of the, the, the metal work, or what appeared to be metal, was all wood. It was all MDF construction. Um, even the scissor lift for the scanner was all built out of MDF or um, various things like that. Uh, now, uh, that hinging mechanism was on a, um, on, on a spring originally, so it could be pulled up and down. But at one point it broke, so I'm not sure. Uh, but we didn't use it an awful lot. There were a couple of close-ups of it. But anyway, um, I'm really liking what this has done. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'm going to have even more fun with it when we start to distress this and get it all finished. So that's going quite well. The plinth as well, really happy with that. It picked up a little bit of rust in some of the corners, but I'm not too concerned because at the end of the day, um, I'm, I'm just, uh, just really happy with, with these textures and, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, now I'm gonna have to sort of clean up uh, the, the areas where I have to put the feet into the, to the plinth and the stabilizers. Um, and we'll see what happens. Now, I, I mentioned this once before too, is I'm using a combination of PLA and resin. Now, I have three printers at my disposal. I have two resin and I have one PLA. Um, my my uh, resin printers are my uh, Photon S um, from Anycubic and uh, my uh, Photon Mono X, which has a 300 by 300 plate, so you can do a lot bigger prints. Um, and they're both online and they're both working quite well. Um, and uh, uh, my PLA um, uh, is, is also in any cubic, um, and it's called the, the X. So uh, those are the machines that I'm using. But Curiously, you know, and I'm learning still how to print and, 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 and the various things and big shout out to my friend Lou Dalmaso over at Aztec Dummy who I drive crazy with emails about uh, my printing. 
Why doesn't this work? Why isn't this happening? <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's really, really good at helping me sort of zero in on, on, on some of those things. And, and curiously, one of the things I learned from talking to him was, you know, how you position your um, parts on the plate too. Some things like to be straight up and down, but some things don't. Um, but curiously enough, the slicers uh, for the any cubics, um, you know, um, uh, the photon slicer is not it's not great. I, I prefer Cheeto box and I've been learning how to take things, put them into Cheeto box to, to to get the support system on them and then move them over to slice over um, on my photon. Um, it is possible to do that and you do get a better result. Um, but it's a lot of work for me um, because I'm still learning, but hey. Um, but we've made a lot of progress, as I've said. Um, so the plinth is looking good. Um, my control board uh, has uh, a couple of coats of my uh, Duplo primer on it. And so that, that's ready to, to, to paint. Um, but uh, before I do that, I'm going to have uh, to do a, a, a sort of a, a make some decisions about uh, whether I'm using fiber optics or whether I'm using actual uh, just little LEDs. Um, my dear friend Randy Nubit over at Voodoo Effects and I have been sort of talking about this and he's really advocating for me to stay with LA LEDs and not to go with um, uh, fiber optics uh, because he says I'm going to get a lot more punch out of the LEDs but figuring out how to get all of that light blocked inside this small space is going to be a challenge so the whole lighting of this is probably going to be an entire show in and of itself. But anyway, um, so the console will go uh, like that, and that's kind of cool. Um, I have been printing frantically, and so um, I have managed to build one, um, uh, one of my uh, columns. And uh, I thought I'd sort of get this pulled out on camera and we'll see what we've got here. Um, and what I did was I painted the inside of, of the column with uh, what's, what's called a hammered iron steel. It's, a, um, it's, it's one of those um, uh, Rust-Oleum sprays, fancy sprays that you can get at, uh, at your local uh, hardware store. Um, and, and that gave me those sort of dark shadows on the inside. What I've got to do on the outside now is it's got to have two coats of my uh, oxide um, uh, oxidizing paint will go on. Um, and then uh, one, when that's all textured, um, and, and I've rusted it over because that does sort of change the effect of it. Um, then I can patina this and, and finish it. But these columns are looking pretty cool. Um, so I wanted to show you one in place. Um, so here it is. It, it extends the, um, the, 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 the platform um, all the way out, as you can see. Um, but uh, what essentially what, what you do is is you you then get this this sort of extension arm uh, you've got your drum and that connects over to here and that takes you all the way to the center and there are six of these and and so that's coming together really well um, and I and, and it's sort of you know it's it's really it's really fun but there's a lot of work to get get to the next step. But we're we're sort of chipping away at it. Um, the center console is um, is quite something. Um, it is uh, a series of elements that make up this center console. So essentially, um, I've just put a one coat of um, my uh, squadron gray putty into this seam. I've got plenty of room in here so the wiring for the blue light that's going to sh shine down through the time rotor just to give that glowing effect and I think I am going to have it on a, on a pulse just to sort of give it that uh, illusion of movement. Um, 
that is going to uh, be the next thing that I, I work on uh, just because I've got to have to start drilling some holes but anyway um, one of these works or it used to there there it is one's wider than the others so anyway that is going to sort of go like this and I'm going to gingerly hold that like that and then um, what happens then is um, the, ti the time road uh, 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 goes into this sort of setup here and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a series of things and I'm, I, I haven't um, built my, uh, the last three elements of the rings yet so um, that, that's the next thing for me to do but you can see here um, let's see, how does this work? Uh, it works like that. Okay, so that, that goes into there. This uh, Lexan tube then goes into there. That's going to sit something like that. So you can see now, uh, of course, now it's not square, so I apologize. Obviously, on the day it will be. And that's going to sit like that. And then uh, this piece uh, drops in here like this. Like that. There's three rings that go through this element right here, which then uh, hooks up to this piece right here, um, which make up the, uh, the, the top of the time rotor. And then that, all that, is going to then hook up to this little baby right here and that all sits something like that-ish. <laughs> now what I've got to do obviously is, is I've got to adjust uh, some elements here to make sure that this is all, all sitting nice and flush because I'm already noticing uh, just by doing a quick test fit that um, uh, it's not all um, coming together nicely just yet but it will we've got to sort of dial it all in and get it all snug and, and angled correctly but you can really start to see this thing coming together I mean it's it's really fun um, and th th there's a lot to this um, but wow uh, it, it's really getting me, getting the juices going, and, um, and, and so I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited about it. Um, but I've got, uh, I've got some challenges, obviously. Now I have also um, completed the scanner, uh, resin exterior, uh, PLA interior box uh, with a PLA screen. Um, I'm going to put a transparency. Uh, let me get this out of the way so I don't cause a problem. I'm going to get a. Uh, a transparency in here. Uh, there. I'm going to get a transparency in here uh, so that I can uh, get some light back uh, and there's plenty of room in there for me to throw a light uh, onto that transparency so that that's good. There's a scissor lift to this and this will obviously uh, um, hang from one of one of the beams and that completes the sort of the whole set as it were. Um, now, I've had some weird issues with my uh, resin uh, printing, even though I've put them on support trees. I've been getting this weird sort of uh, unfinished bottom, even though it was up on supports. Um, so I'm thinking that um, it might be a leveling issue. It might also uh, be a um, uh, how I'm putting my supports on there, but I'm having uh, some success with some prints and not so much with others. So I don't really know what's going on there, but uh, you know I'm continuing to sort of learn how to how to make all that work. Um, so and then of course inside the the, the, the time um, inside the time rotor is the element that that um, which I think is really cool. It's these white. Um, I've got these white um, PLA printed pieces and I've got some uh, 1.25 inch Lexan tubing uh, that's 3 mil wide and uh, they're uh, 
shaft ends are cut at 45 degree angles and so you've got that kind of um, uh, effect up and down and uh, the blue light uh, shining through those should be really cool and I'm gonna make sure obviously I've got uh, a blue light shooting up as well as shooting down so we get um, a really nice crisp effect and I think I'll have those on um, uh, breathing uh, blue LEDs uh, because um, I think that uh, the breathing blue LEDs uh, will will really uh, make it quite quite dramatic. So um, so that kind of takes care of all of that. Um, basically, it's really all there. Um, I've got to continue assembling my um, my five other uh, columns which I will continue to do. I've printed all the barrel bottoms and the barrel tops. They just need to be um, uh, painted in the metal effects oxide uh, with two coats and then let, let dry. Uh, and then I can go to town on those. As with the, uh, the base of the time rotor and um, the, uh, the, the top element as well, um, I'm choosing to texturize everything because my recollection is is everything was texturized um, uh, and, and, and sort of painted up. I mean, um, obviously we didn't have this awesome seal of Rassilon cap on the top of our, uh, on the top of our set. There was no need to, but boy, uh, for this finished model, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to have. And it was a really, really nice touch uh, from Jeff Fink. So um, I'm really, really liking that. And, you know, PLA prints, for the most part, have the, those very sort of uneven striations. You can get some pretty smooth surfaces and then you can get some unsmooth uh, surfaces. But I found uh, a combination of sprue goo um, in, a, in, a, in a gray and my gray squadron putty. And um, I'm really happy with the results. And, and you know, it, it, it's created a really kind of fun out of this world texture. So I'm not disappointed with that at all. Um, and as I said, uh, the next huge challenge is, is really going to be, I'm sort of getting all these parts uh, painted and detailed. Uh, with, uh, and then I think what we'll do is, is we'll do a show about um, just sort of painting and texturizing things. Um, and we'll also dive into some of the str strategies um, I'm thinking about in terms of lighting this up. Uh, to, to, to have it come alive um, but that's uh, that's where we are um, and I'm uh, I'm really happy with um, with what we're doing so uh, this is uh, update number two um, we're gonna do a, a third update um, in about a week or so and I should be quite a far along on that point um, and then uh, we'll see we'll see where we are from there um, but that is it. This is the 8th Doctor's console. Um, now I, I, I do know that uh, if you want to pick this, uh, these files up, Jeff does have them on uh, Partworks Upgrades uh, UK. So um, I'll make sure that there's a link in the description below where you can pick up the files. Uh, only for the uh, interior elements, not the laser cut pieces from Steve Williams. Um, I'll get some more cl clarification on how those parts can be obtained, if they can be. Um, so um, I'll, I'll see what I can do about um, figuring out um, that. Um, but um, as I mentioned, you know, um, don't forget to check out um, the, uh, the forum on, uh, on, on Facebook that, um, that, that Steve has. And uh, they're, they're sort of building and, 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 and following along on that uh, and I'll put a link to the forum as well uh, so that we can all follow along and uh, it's great fun so um, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to doing a little more work on this as the the weeks uh, come along here and um, it'll be fun to sort of start thinking about some things that I've forgotten about the production and maybe sharing those with you when we do the final reveal uh, but until that time uh, and we meet again, as always. I wish you all to be safe, be well, build something, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.